Hey, it's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing a carb clean on this Honda Mini Trail 50 or a Z50. Um, it's been sitting for a while and it doesn't run. I just did a compression test on it and it's 135 psi. It has spark. Um, and um, the last thing I need to check is just to make sure the fuel system's clean. So um, it looks very dirty on the outside. It's been sitting for a year. I'm just going to go ahead and clean the carb, and it'll give me a chance to do a video on this. So um, let's get started. All right. So right here, the, the there's a little cap here. Just make sure you can loosen that. And there's two 10 mil nuts on each side. One on this side and one opposite side. Just loosen those up. Got this little hose here. And this fuel line is totally hard as a rock here. Well, you're gonna make sure to turn the fuel off so it doesn't dump it all over you. All right. All right, and then just unscrew this. And I already had the air cleaner off. You know, the air cleaner. I'm sure you can figure out to get rid of that. So just slide that right out. All right, let's go to workbench and uh, take this apart. All right, so before I brought it to the workbench, you know, these, these have a nice drain on it. Uh, so you can throw it in the trunk of your car or whatever. So I, I just held this up above the um, drain pan, and I... Loosen this up, and I'm just going to remove it. So, and I got a magnetic tray here just to keep everything um, organized. All right, so this is the idle adjust screw, and this is the pilot air screw. Uh, I'm going to turn this in, noting how many turns in it is, and I'm going to just to lightly seat it. So that's all right, not even. No wonder the plug was so black. It was out like a quarter turn. Alright, so we'll reset that. Okay, so there's a spring and um, just the screw itself. Alright, we can leave the idle just alone. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, let's pop the float bowl off. I'm just going to stick a screwdriver in here. Try to pry this guy off. Or just right there. So that looks pretty nasty in there. Definitely dip worthy. Alright, let's pull this tube off. Alright, to get the flow pin out, I like to use a center punch, a spring loaded center punch. And I back up the post with socket here.
pull the needle seat out. Followed by the float needle seat. Main jet. And the pilot jet's in here. It looks really plugged up. Alright, I'm going to have to grind down the screwdriver a little bit. Alright, so I take some cheap Harbor Freight screwdrivers and I just grind them down. So you want to have it as a real snug fit in here. gives you the best chance of removing these and luckily this one was not crazy tight so look how tiny that guy is and there's a little gasket down here let's fish it out it's for the needle seat Right there. So at this point, um, I'm going to take a break here. Uh, these parts here, I'm going to dip in the Berry Man carb dip. Um, oh, and by the way, I got to get this. Got to separate these two really quick. But all this is going to get dipped here. And right here you can see that this gasket's pretty trashed. And there's some rubber parts in here as well. I can't dip this carb just yet. I'm going to go online and make sure I can order these parts uh, before, um, you know, trashing them. So I'm sure it's available. It's just that's something i got to check. So um, let's go ahead and undo this really guy really quick. Alright, so I got this guy in a vise here, and I'm just going to take a screwdriver and try to pop this main jet loose. And I don't have a really good screwdriver for it. It doesn't look like it. These are all two. Alright, there we go. There's the main jet. Looks pretty plugged up too. Alright, so I, I get this stuff at Walmart or AutoZone. It's Berryman Chem Dip. Um, it's nice because you just throw this nasty stuff in there and it pretty much comes out very clean. So um, I'm also going to throw the float in there. I'll put the float right on top so it'll sink. And then just throw the rest of these parts in. All brass parts so far. And I didn't throw the car body in yet because uh, I don't know if those parts are available. So let's just begin by dipping these. And we'll see how it turns out. So I'm going to let those soak for a few hours. what to do about that. Alright, so let's see how everything looks. Alright, 
what I have here is a bucket full of warm water. Just going to toss everything in there and give it a good rinse. Alright, and the float was fully submerged, and I don't hear anything in here, so that's good. I also have a, a nice way on how to test that. So blow everything off with the like there. This pilot jet man. Let's see through. Yeah, I can't see anything. It's completely plugged. I'm gonna look for a rebuild kit that has these jets available. I may dip it again, but it just looks pretty gnarly. Alright, so the complete gasket kit is available, which comes with this gasket, um, intake gasket, and several other gaskets. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this so I can dip it. And these were kind of already loose, so that's good. And I'm using a JIS screwdriver here, which is a Japanese Phillips. Looks like they have a little dot here, and I think that's what designates um, the Japanese. All right, so this gasket came off pretty clean. Choke deal out of the way. There's a few plastic parts in here, so I can't dip it. And I have aluminum in my vise here, so I'm not damaging anything here.
Alright, so I got it laid out in the order of a disassembly here. And this guy just comes out. Alright, we can remove the idle adjust. Alright, so this is fully stripped down except for the gasket here. And I have the pilot jet in here for a second soak. Um, it was plugged up and I, I did have to soak it again. We'll see if we can improve on that. Alright, so there's no more rubber parts in here. Well, yeah, there's one more rubber part. This gasket here is included in the new kit so let's get that out of here all right get a good shot of how dirty that is Jet here. much better. I can actually see through it now. Alright, so it's actually been two days since everything's been soaking in here. I uh, didn't get a chance to come out here last night. here. Alright, so I blew everything out with compressed air. I have my new gaskets. All my components are laid out here. Um, I like to spray carb clean in all the passages to make sure make sure it's flowing good, especially this one, the pilot jet. Make sure it comes up through the hole here. So that's flowing. Um, everything else looks clean. Alright, 
So let's begin in here. All right, let's take our, our red gasket here and drop it in. Followed by the float seat. It's a seven mil. Tighten that down. Just snug it. All right. Put your uh, jet holder in here. I think that's a six mil. Followed by your main jet. A number 50 for this guy. Okay, and your pilot jet, which is a number 38. Drop that in there. Just snug, don't go crazy tight. Put our float uh, needle seat in there, our needle, I mean, sorry, followed by the float. And this float, you know, I had it submerged in the chem dip, so uh, and I shook it, and there was nothing in it, but if you had. Um, if this took solvent, then you know you have a leak. So what you can do is you can put this in, uh, just dunk it in, in boiling hot water or very hot water that was just recently boiled. And what that does is it expands the air on the inside, forces the air out, and you'll see bubbles coming out. And that, that'll tell you where the leak is. I've had good luck with soldering these. Um, it's really not that difficult. Um, that's something you want to try if you do have a leaky... Um, Leaky float. All right, so let's see. All right, the flow height for this is eighteen mil, eighteen millimeters. You want to check it from the gasket surface to the top of the float. Seems like I need to tweak this just a little bit. All right, perfect. And that's without this sprung down. So, so we're right there. Let's see how does this go back on? All right, we can put our new float gasket on. And these two casting marks here go towards the float pin. Alright, so that's it for down there. I also dunked this guy. There's an O-ring here that was kind of screwed up, so I'm going to put a little WD-40 on this. Cleaning the O-ring, and we'll just slide it on.
Alright, crank that tight. These springs are the same, so just go ahead and put the idle just screw back in. Also the pilot screw. And I'm going to lightly seat this. And factory setting is 1 and 3 eighths out, plus or minus an eighth. I'm just going to start at that. So half, 1, half, and just close it up a little bit. We'll go through the tuning of that. Alright, now comes the choke. Slide it through here, rubber grommet, Alright, this goes in like that. The spring faces the engine side of the carb. Yeah, this should be fun to get in here. So a spacer, lock washer, and this lock plate, followed by the nut.
Alright, and this last gasket goes here. And sometimes I like to use a little bit of grease on there just to keep it in place. Kind of like temporary glue. Alright, this carb's ready to go back on. Alright, so this little groove faces the right side of the bike. Screw that back on. Make sure the throttle operates nice. Alright, just go ahead and put it back on. On the two studs here. The two nuts. Okay, you just snug them up. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Alright, we'll put the air cleaner back on. It's pretty loose, this clamp is pretty much shot. What I did is I completely drained the tank, the fuel um, didn't smell all that good and I also bought a new fuel fuel line and it's a five millimeter ID. We'll top it off with fresh fuel and see if it'll fire. All right, I'll also put a fresh plug in it. So let's see what will happen. Alright, let's get it. Alright, we'll let it warm up for a little bit and then we'll uh, tune the pilot. Uh, Air screw. All right, so the engine's been running for five minutes or so. It's nice and nice and warm. Definitely want to do this adjustment when it's at operating temperature. Um, the idle screw is right here, and the pilot air screw is here. Turning it in, turning the pilot screw in will richen it, and out will lean it. First, we got to get the idle kind of low. So right there, like really low, lower than normal. So any adjustments here, you're going to be able to tell. Let's get a little higher than that. Okay, so right there. I'm going to turn it in until it stumbles. And remember, I'm at one and a half out or so. So see, it stumbles. Alright, so I'm at one and a half out. Let's go half turn out further. Okay, so it increased in speed. So that's what you want to do. You want to find the highest RPM.
Okay, so see that? It's stumbling again, so I want to go back out. Sped up. So that's it right there. Now we're going to lower the RPM a little bit. So that's it. That's properly set up right there. Let's see if it'll bog when I hit the throttle. See, and the, the, R, the idle came right down. It didn't dip. If it dipped, it'd be a little too rich. Um, and there's no bogging, so it's not lean. Well, maybe right there the rat is, but... Alright, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a test ride. And if, when you hit the throttle and it bogs, then you might want to turn this in. Um, but other than that, I'm going to leave it for now until I test ride it. So it does bog a little bit. Let's, uh, let's turn it in quarter turn. So you can see right there, uh, usually when it dies out after a high rev, it's too rich. back up and redo this. going back to my baseline here. Alright, so I'm at one and a half. Let's see if I go to one, what happens? It starts to stumble. Go to two. Alright, one and a half sounds good, two sounds good, it's, it's going to have to wait for a test ride here. That actually sounds better. One and three quarters where I'm going to leave it for now. Alright, well that's it for this video. It's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. That's how you clean a carb on a Z50 and tune the pilot air screw. So, subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it, uh, leave a comment, man. Just 
spark up a conversation with me. So until next time, keep wrenching.